The best way to collect traffic on Wireshark or any other program like it is to be promiscuous. And you may be thinking to yourself, a couple of things. One, what is promiscuous mode? And the other one is, why do we need it? Well, promiscuous mode on a network device allows us to hear any and everything going across that network device. Now, hold on. I know what you're thinking. When we have a network device, let's say like on this host that we're recording on right here, don't we hear everything and see everything that's going across the NIC to and from the rest of the network or internet? Well, yes, but there's some traffic that's kind of, let's say, ignored, if you will, because it's not necessarily pertinent to what it is that we're doing on our system. When we go into promiscuous mode, and that allows us to be able to see anything and everything, we are capturing or we have the ability to capture traffic that is not necessarily tagged to us specifically, but if it goes across that NIC in any way, shape or fashion, then we're definitely going to be able to hear it. And we use programs like Wireshark and TCP dump, TCP replay and some other ones out there, but specifically in this skill, Wireshark to utilize promiscuous mode on that network interface to be able to hear and see everything that's going across that interface for us to capture. Now, let me give you a quick example here for a second. Let's say that we're on our network uh, system like this host right here, and we're just going to Google. Well, if we just use Wireshark to capture that traffic going from us to Google and keep promiscuous mode turned off, we're only going to see what's actively going from us to Google and back to us. And so all that passive traffic that's going behind the scenes doesn't get picked up by Wireshark. And we could be talking about broadcast um, pings or queries or that multicast DNS that we've seen many times in the past that just doesn't get picked up. Now, is there a rhyme or reason to it? We're not going to go into that in this skill or this course. What we're just really focusing on is the promiscuous mode of it to see and make sure that we're getting everything and anything that we want on that network interface. And so in this nugget, we're going to be taking a look at the two operating system variants to really get a kind of idea of how to do that and do a little bit of comparison as well too. And the first one we're going to be taking a look at is Windows. Now, as you can see here, we have Wireshark opened up and already at the main screen. And you can see all those squiggly lines right here. Let me zoom in for you real quick. And all those squiggly lines are basically like a little heartbeat of traffic that's going across. The higher the uh, little squiggly is, the more traffic that we're actually passing back and forth. Now, at this particular moment, I'm not really doing a lot on the internet, which is why there's not really a lot of activity. But you may be wondering, well, if we're not acti actively sending anything back and forth, what's it seeing? Well, that's some of that promiscuous stuff that's going on in the background, too. And if we go to the top left of Wireshark, let me zoom in again for you, the little gear up there, and click on that, then we can see, as I move this over, that we have a checkbox here, right there, under Promisc. And if I expand that all the way, you can see where it says Promiscuous. Now, that's by, def by default, that's checked whenever we select one of our interfaces. Now, we're going to go through two things real quick. We're going to make sure that we select the proper interface. And we do that by expanding the details on one and seeing what the actual IP address is. Now, I'm going to select the one that's actually connected to the outside network, which is this Ethernet right here, and uncheck Promiscuous mode and do a start, which allows us to start picking up the capturing. Now, it is running, and it is picking up a lot of packets and stuff, but I'm going to let this run for about two or three minutes, come right back, and then we'll compare it to what we get when we run it in promiscuous mode. Be right back. Well, that one didn't last that long, so I just went ahead and stopped it real quick because I figured there's an easier way to do this. I can just base it on the actual timestamp, and if we zoom in, we can see that packet 884 has a timestamp of 31.99 seconds. And so that was nearly 32 seconds with 884 packets. Now let's go ahead and rerun this again for the exact same amount of time and see if we get more or less in promiscuous mode. Now I stopped this one just short of what our time was, but this is at 31 seconds. And we have, let me zoom in for you, nearly 8,500 packets. And that is significantly more in promiscuous mode than we got just in regular, you know, non-promiscuous 
monitoring what's going back and forth because again we were picking up what's actively assigned to this network interface to and from whatever we're requesting and getting and in promiscuous mode you can go through and see that you're getting a lot of traffic that's being broadcasted over the rest of the network that's not necessarily identified or tagged for this uh, specific system and in the previous nugget when we were talking about uh, perimeter points and having uh, the right place on your network to put a monitor such as Wireshark here, that's where this comes into play at. Because when we have Wireshark set up on a in promiscuous mode at an access point place on the network that is a perimeter point for in and out traffic for our internal network to the external network, we can pick up everything coming from the outside network to our inside devices. Now, a question I get a lot is, is does Wireshark or any other program look different in Kali slash Linux than it does on Windows? And we're in our Kali box VM right here. No reason uh, to crank it up unless you want to. But uh, the short answer is no, because Wireshark is made the same for both of them. And they both look the same. The reason that it's darker here is because I'm in Kali in dark mode. And that's why this is the way it is. Now you can see on here that all the traffic is pretty much flatlined all the way across. And that's because in Linux based systems or POSIX based systems, things get a little bit different when we're talking about promiscuous mode. Because if you'll notice here that we don't have that promiscuous checkbox. So that is the biggest, uh, well, I was fibbing when I said there's no difference. That is the only difference that there is between Windows and uh, POSIX based systems. My bad. But because we don't have that uh, checkbox on how to do promiscuous mode, how is it set inside of POSIX based systems? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're going to come over here to our terminal and do just that. But we have to make sure that we're doing it on the right interface. And in order to be able to do that, we just need to type ifconfig uh, dash a, or excuse me, just do a simple ifconfig and we can get all the uh, interfaces that we have on this particular system. Now, there is a Docker on here. Don't worry about that. But by default, the, it has a local loopback and an Ethernet zero. Now, the Ethernet zero is the one that's going to and from the Internet. Now, that's the one that we want to set to promiscuous in order to be able to pick up more traffic. So that one is easy. I have config or do this in sudo. So sudo I have config dash a. And then the name of the interface that we're specifically assigning promiscuous mode to followed by promisc. And I'll put this below here on the screen. And when we hit enter, it's going to ask us for our pseudo password again. And we're going to come back over here and see that we're starting to get more traffic peaks on our inner uh, GUI inside of Wireshark. And that's because now that interface is listening to any and everything that's coming to it. And so if we select ETH0 and hit our Start Capture button, we can see that it's already starting to pick things up, even though this particular VM is not going in and out to the internet for anything in particular. It's picking everything up based on promiscuous mode and seeing it, what it's just listening to. All right, so we have our command prompt open up on the actual Windows box right here. And as you can see behind it, uh, I got a little bit of inception going on because I have OBS right behind it. And you can also see the Kali uh, Wireshark running still in promiscuous mode. So how do we set the interface in Windows to promiscuous mode? We don't because that's how to take care of in Wireshark and also TCP dump for the Windows version of that. Because there is no real easy way to do that and there's no point in even going past that. So when we're taking a look at, let's say, an exam that's related to this course, don't worry about any command line that takes Windows uh, network to promiscuous modes. That's only valid inside of POSIX based systems. And we make up for it inside of Wireshark like we did earlier in Windows by checking that checkbox for promiscuous. And we saw the difference between how traffic is recorded based on promiscuous and not promiscuous. So are we listening to everything or are we not listening? Are we only listening to specific things that are being sent to and from us? Think of this as uh, think of network promiscuous mode as basically taking a one of those glass cups and uh, going next to the wall and listening to your neighbors. Not that I would ever do such a thing, but the non promiscuous mode of that would be your neighbor coming over and talking to you directly or screaming to you from next door through those paper thin walls. And then promiscuous mode would be taking the glass cup 
and going over to the wall and listening to everything. And you're able to hear everything inside of your room, plus whatever your neighbor is talking about on the other side of that paper thin wall. Now in the next nugget, we're going to be going over a few of the safe options inside of Wireshark and why we want to use some instead of others for the purposes of this course. Now there may be some that you like out there and that's perfectly okay, but stick around and we'll keep that Wireshark open because we're going to be using it again. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.